Deep learning powers most of the technologies that we rely on every single day. This could be machine translation that translates the websites that we're visiting. It could be facial recognition that lets us log into our phones. Or it could even be recommendations that we rely on to show us the next best TV series or show on Netflix to watch. So in this video, we will look into deep learning in more detail and really understand what it is. This video is part of the Deep Learning Explained series brought to you by Assembly AI, a company developing a state-of-the-art automatic speech-to-text API. If you'd like to have a free API token, follow the link in the description. First and foremost, a description of deep learning. Deep learning is a group of techniques that are based on neural networks that have the capacity to learn complex patterns directly from the data. So let's break this down and go at it step by step. First thing, neural networks. Neural networks are algorithms that were created inspired by our brains. You can see in this example, we have layers of neurons stacked one after each other. In neural networks, we have three different layers. One of them is called a input layer where we accept the input. The other one called an output layer at the end of the network where it gives the actual prediction or the outcome of the network or the algorithm. And in between, we have the hidden layers. All of these layers consist of neurons. Depending on the input or the output of the pro or the problem you're solving, you're going to have different number of neurons. There is always one input and one output layer, but the more hidden layers that you have in between those, the deeper a network that you're going to have. And that's where the keyword deep comes from in deep learning. Whereas learning comes from machine learning or the fact that this network is able to learn different complex patterns. Neural networks and deep learning has been heavily impacting our lives in the last 10 to 15 years, but actually they've been around for longer than that. The first neural network was suggested all the way back in 1943. And since then there have been waves of interest that eventually died out. And you can actually think that we are currently living on a new wave of interest when it comes to deep learning. And this time, people think that it's not actually going to go away because, first of all, we have a lot of data that we can deal with and the computing power is getting better and better every day. Well, not to mention the research that is being done into deep learning currently to make it better and faster every day. So let's talk about how this all relates to machine learning and also how machine learning compares to deep learning. Let's start all the way from the top. We know that we have computer science about everything, right? And computer science has different branches. This could be computer security, software engineering, or distributed systems, for example. And one of these branches is called artificial intelligence. In artificial intelligence, the general goal is to have the computers perform tasks that are normally typical to humans in a way that is accurate and also efficient. There are different approaches to artificial intelligence, of course, and one of these approaches is called machine learning. In summary, machine learning aims for the computer to learn how to do a task directly from the data. Well, deep learning is part of machine learning. It's again in itself a group of techniques that are in machine learning. So when you say machine learning, you are actually including deep learning inside the picture. But when we want to compare machine learning and deep learning, of course, what we're trying to compare is the traditional machine learning algorithms with the deep learning algorithms that have been improved in the last decade. All right, so let's look into how they're different. Traditional machine learning algorithms on one side and deep learning on the other side. So the first and most prominent difference is that when you are training machine learning algorithms, you need features extracted from the data manually. And when you're doing deep learning training, you don't have to do that. So just to give you an example, let's say you're trying to classify cats or dogs the most common example on the internet. So what happens is when you want to um, train your model to understand if a given picture is of a cat or a dog, you have to extract features such as uh, how many pointy ears it has, what does the nose look like, what is the color of the nose, uh, what is the pose that the animal is giving, for example. This is just an abstract example of what kind of features that you can extract. Whereas for deep learning, you can just give the image as it is to your deep learning algorithm and it will itself understand what the pattern is and what the features are that are separating the two animals from each other in these photos. And this is very nice, right? Because when you're training deep learning models, you do not have to do future engineering at all. 
But of course, this nice little feature comes with a cost. When you're training deep learning algorithms, you have to have much more data than you need for traditional machine learning algorithms to be able to train your model to be accurate. And also due to all the computation that needs to be done in deep learning algorithms, you have to have a stronger machine, which has higher processing power, and it's going to take a longer time. But that's kind of like a trade-off, of course. The stronger the machine that you have, the less time it's going to take. But on average, it's always going to take longer to train deep learning algorithms that compared to the traditional machine learning algorithms. But there is one other difference, actually, that is kind of hard to uh, put on paper. And that is that deep learning algorithms are actually able to capture patterns that are a little bit more abstract. So you can actually perform tasks with deep learning algorithms that you would not be able to with traditional machine learning algorithms. This could be, for example, natural language processing. You might not always know what kind of features to extract or what kind of features to generate from your text to be able to do sentiment analysis, that is analyzing if a certain text, if a given text has a positive or a negative connotation. Whereas deep learning handles this very well just by looking at the examples which were labeled. Another example is actually the example that I've given earlier. When you're trying to distinguish between cats and dogs, it might be a little bit hard to create features just by looking at the animal's uh, photos. Whereas with deep learning, you don't have to worry about that. You can just feed your data into the deep learning algorithm and then it will extract everything for you. So I think this makes deep learning algorithms better when it comes to abstract tasks, which would be really hard for a human to even format. And there are of course other cool things that you can do with deep learning, for example, turning speech to text. And that's exactly what Assembly AI does. So if you're currently interested in having a speech to text API integrated in any of the projects that you're working on, you can give Assembly AI a try. You can follow the link in the description to get your own free API token to start working on it whenever you like. If you like this video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing. We will be here every week bringing you information on deep learning, machine learning, and tutorials on the latest technologies that are out there. We will be very happy to see you with us. If you have any ideas of videos that we can make, definitely go ahead and write a comment and let us know. That would be awesome. So thanks for watching and have a nice rest of your day.